morning busy bees we're here for our very last chapter in the mouse and the motorcycle can't wait to see how it ends let's find out chapter 13 is called a subject for a composition and a composition can be something that you write down either words or music on paper okay so let's go ralph was a hero in the mouse hole that night he was admi his admiring relatives gathered all around begging to hear the story of his adventures Ralph could not help bragging a little as he told the story of his travels, beginning with the search for the second floor rooms, skipping the part about the teacher trapping him under the drinking glass, and ending with Keith taking the aspirin and finally falling asleep. But are you sure it was really an aspirin tablet, Ralph's, mo Ralph's mother said? Are you sure it wasn't some other kind of pill? Keith put it on the bedside table and refused to take it until his mother saw it, said Ralph. At first, his mother and father got pretty excited and thought he was out of his mind from the fever when he started telling them there was an aspirin on the table. Then they saw the pill and could tell from the letters that it really was an aspirin, and they decided the night clerk must have brought it up. They thought the windows rattled so much that they didn't hear his knock. Oh, Ralph, I'm so proud of you, said his mother with a sigh of relief, while his brothers and sisters and cousins stared at him with shining eyes. There's Keith and his friend Ralph who saved him. Good work, Ralph. I didn't think you could do it, said Uncle Lester heartedly. I feel much better about room service now that I have an aspirin for a tip, said Ralph's mother. I feel at least we've done something right. Our Ralph is growing up, said Aunt Sissy. Yes, Ralph is growing up, agreed his mother with a sad note in her voice. It's hard to believe it seems only yesterday that my tiny pink mouse with, had no hair. Naturally, this embarrassed Ralph, but now his mother finally admitted he was growing up. He decided to make the most of this moment. Now can I get down to the first floor by myself, he asked eagerly. We'll see, said his mother, looking worried once more. Nonsense, said Uncle Lester. Of course he can go. Ralph has shown that he can be a responsible mouse. I guess you're right, said his mother nervously. Oh boy, exclaimed Ralph. Tell us again how you climbed down the vine and the near owl nearly got you, begged his cousin. No, tell us how the Amazons got stuck on a crack, said another. No, tell us the part about how you got the dog to bark, pleaded a third. The only flaw in the evening for Ralph was the fact that he had not found the motorcycle in his travels throughout the hotel. Keith slept soundly the next morning. Although he still had a temperature, Ralph was pleased that he was feeling much better. Did you, do you hurt any place, Miss Gridley asked him. Is your throat sore? Does your stomach ache? Keith just shook his head. I feel just sort of tired. He's going to be all right. He must have picked up a bug someplace, said Mr. Gridley. A day in bed with plenty of fluids and he'll be on his feet again. Mr. Gridley nodded. Do you feel like eating breakfast, he asked Keith. We can order something from room service. Keith brightened up. Can I really have something from room service, he asked. But then he slumped back down on the pillow. Mm, but I'm not really hungry. Some orange juice would be good for you. All right, and bacon and toast and jelly. Your appetite seems to have come back in a hurry, said Mr. Gridley, as he picked up the telephone and asked to be connected with the room service to order. He thought as soon as the adults had gone, Ralph popped out into the kitchen. Hi, said Keith. Thanks a lot for that aspirin. It really helped. That's all right, answered Ralph. Where'd you find it? Under a dresser down on the first floor. The first floor? Keith could not believe it. How did you manage to get it up here? Once more, Ralph told the story of his night's adventure, skipping the part about the drinking glass, but making it sound like he had narrowly escaped horny talons of an owl as he traveled down the vine. Golly, Keith replied, you know what? You're a pretty smart mouse, and a brave one, too. It was nothing, said Ralph in an offhand manner. Nothing? It was plenty. You risked your life. The boy's admiration and gratitude made Ralph feel even prouder of what he had done. I parked your ambulance in the hall. Your folks will probably see it and bring it in when they come back. That reminds me, you didn't happen to see the motorcycle any place, did you? Well, no, I didn't. Ralph suddenly felt less proud of himself, but I didn't have much time to look. Yeah, I know. I just wondered. A knock came at the door and it sent Ralph scurrying into the knot hole. Come in. Matt entered with a tray. Here you are, and here's your ambulance. I found it out in the hall. Sorry to see you're under the weather. Thank you. I'll be all right. Keith handed Matt a coin that his father had left for a tip. And thanks for bringing my ambulance. Matt pocketed the coin. Thank you. And by the way, this doesn't happen to be yours, does it? And he pulled the little motorcycle right out of his pocket. 
How exciting, the motorcycle's back. Ralph was so excited that he almost fell out the knothole. Hey, he said, it sure is. Where'd you find it? In a hamper of linen that had been chewed by mice or by a mouse. It fell out when the housekeeper was showing us the damage that it had done. I picked it up before anyone noticed it. Gee, thanks. Thanks a lot, Keith accepted the motorcycle and set it on his tray. It's my favorite, and I didn't like losing it. I wonder how it got in the hamper of linen. Keith grinned but said nothing. Old Matt rubbed his chin. I don't suppose a certain irresponsible mouse happened to ride it into a pile of sheets and pillowcases and it got tangled up and dumped in the hamper. Keith tried not to laugh. I don't know any irresponsible mice, he said. Only one responsible mouse. Say, how'd you guess? There isn't much about this hotel that escapes my attention, said Matt. I saw that mouse out in the hall with a little motorcycle. I imagine he's a regular speed demon. Ralph could no longer stay out of the conversation. I'm fast, but I'm careful. I haven't had an accident yet, he boasted. And he recalled his fall into the wastebasket. At least not since I learned to ride the motorcycle. If there's one thing I can't stand, it's a cheeky mouse, said Matt. What do you call getting tangled up in a lot of linen? Well, I mean, I didn't crack up the motorcycle, said Ralph with dignity. He's not cheeky, said Keith. He's brave. You aren't going to tell the management about him, are you? What's the use? If they get rid of the mice, more will move in. Anyway, he's a cute little fella. It cheers me up just to think of him tearing around on that little motorcycle. If only I could, thought Ralph. There followed an unusually pleasant day for the mice. He stuffed the bacon and toast through the knot holes. The mice feasted on bacon and jelly before the ants could get them, and they stored the toast against the rapidly approaching time when Keith would leave the hotel. They slept all morning, and Keith alternately napped and played with his cars. For lunch, they enjoyed peanut butter and jelly sandwiches again. Ralph did not sleep well that afternoon. He found himself thinking of the tantalizing glimpse he had of the ground floor and the opportunities that it offered mice. Crumbs in the dining room, leftovers in the kitchen, scraps in the garage, in the garbage. He lay daydreaming on a pile of shredded Kleenex. He could see himself on that first floor, pilfering crumbs in the dining room at night after all the guests were in bed. And from the dining room, he would go into the kitchen right past the night clerk, who was sure to be asleep. If only he could make this trip on his motorcycle. The thought of the motorcycle put an end to Ralph's daydream made of, and made it sleep impossible. After tossing about on his bed of Kleenex, he got up and poked his head out the knot hole. How you feeling? asked Ralph. Mm, sort of tired, said Keith. Ralph climbed through the knot hole. Where are your folks? They went out for a little while. They'll be back. I'm supposed to take a nap. Are you going to? I'd rather talk to you, said Keith. He leaned over and set the motorcycle on the floor. Do you want to ride it, he asked. Do you, do I want to ride it? Ralph could barely believe what he heard and didn't think he heard it correctly. You mean you'll let me? After the way I lost it on you? You've proved you can be responsible when you brought me the aspirin, said Keith. Keith, you're more grown up. Thanks, said Ralph modestly. I guess mice grow up faster than boys. Keith sounded as though he longed to grow up more rapidly like a mouse. You grow up a little bit every day, Ralph said, as he removed the crash helmet from its hiding place behind the curtain. I guess you're right, said Keith. My dad measures me every six months against the door jam of our kitchen back in Ohio, and each mark makes it higher than the last. But I never feel myself growing. You'll wait long enough and you'll be a grown-up, Ralph said. I guess so. Keith slumped back on the pillows, but it takes too long. I grew up, didn't I? asked Ralph. You said it yourself. I've become a responsible mouse. Yes, you did. I guess that's just part of the secret. Just getting bigger is not enough. You have to learn things like not taking off down a steep hill on a motorcycle or a bicycle if you aren't used to the handbrakes and stuff like that. Ralph walked with a slight swagger to the motorcycle, grabbed onto the hand grips, and threw his leg over the seat. He remembered to pick up his tail before he started. Brrrr. He took off across the carpet, circled the room, covering the rough parts under the dresser and the chair, coming to a halt beside the bed. She has good balance on a rough road, said Ralph. She's a mighty fine machine. Say, said Keith, suddenly, how would you like to come with me when I leave the hotel? Come with you? Ralph was stunned. The Mountain View Inn, now he was offered the opportunity to travel. 
yes, come with me to San Francisco, and then back to Ohio. Ralph's first thought was of the motorcycle. If he went with Keith, he would not have to be separated from that motorcycle. Keith must have sensed Ralph's thoughts, because he said, you could ride that motorcycle every day. Ralph was silent. He began to think of other things, his family, the permission he earned to visit the ground floor, Keith's family, and how they might feel about having a mouse. Come on, Ralph, said Keith. You could travel in my pocket. Your mother doesn't care for mice. Not when they're running around loose, but she's kept a couple of white mice right once. I still have their cage at home. You would be very comfortable in it. Comfortable in a cage, answered Ralph. He was horrified. No, thank you. Ah, come on. Would you like to be shut up in a cage, demanded Ralph. Well, no, but... Well, neither would I, said Ralph, especially now that I can finally go down to the ground floor. In his disappointment, Keith slumped against the pillows once more. I guess I knew you really wouldn't want to come. I understand. I sure would hate to see this motorcycle leave, said Ralph, and of course you too. The boy and the mouse were silent. Both were thinking of their wishes and their regrets that the wishes would not come true. Keith rolled over on his side and propped up his head with his fist. Would you like to keep the motorcycle, he asked the mouse. Keep it? Me? Sure, said Keith. I can save up my allowance and buy another once we get back to Ohio. Do you really mean it? Ralph could merely contain his excitement. Keep it for my very own? Of course. How come? Well, I just think of you riding it, said Keith. You know, you grew up and can be trusted to ride a mouse-sized motorcycle. Maybe one day I can earn a real one. The excitement drained out of Ralph. I can't. I don't have any place to keep it. It's too big to go through the knot hole, and I couldn't hide it behind the curtain forever because I've heard Labor Day there are so many tourists they can't take the curtains down. They take the curtains down to be cleaned. Ooh, that is a problem, agreed Keith. There must be some place in a big hotel like this where you could keep the motorcycle. Ralph sat on the motorcycle thinking about it. In the closet, mm, he couldn't get it out when the door was closed. Under the bed, mm -mm. eventually it'll be found. How about downstairs, said Keith. I can carry it down before we leave. There must be a good hiding place down there. Oh, there's a big old clock my ancestor ran up, said Ralph. Nobody ever cleans under that, but frankly, I don't care to have it striking over my head. Keith thought for a while. How about that big television set in the lobby? The noise shouldn't bother you because you would only go under it at night when everyone was asleep. Oh, yes! Ralph was excited. That's a perfect garage. I saw it when I got the aspirin. The legs are just high enough for the motorcycle, but not quite high enough for a vacuum cleaner. Then it's settled, said Keith. And then he added rather sternly, but first, you must ask your mother. Ralph dismounted and ran into the knot hole. He was gone several minutes. She says I can keep the motorcycle if I promise to drive carefully and wear my crash helmet every single time I ride it. Swell. When I check out, I'll hide it for you while my folks are paying the bill. I can't thank you enough, Ralph. Fastened his helmet once more. I never thought I'd have my own motorcycle, one of my very, very own. Keith lay back on the pillow and smiled. It will be fun thinking of you riding around that lobby when I'm back in Ohio and in the winter going to school. And when the teacher asks us to write a composition about our summer vacation, I can write about meeting a brave mouse named Ralph who rode a motorcycle. I'll tell about you bringing me aspirin, except I'll have to call it a pill because I can't spell aspirin. Of course the teacher won't believe it. She'll probably thought I used my imagination. Ralph felt proud to think he was going to be written about in a composition off in Ohio. He grabbed his tails, gunned the motor, and took off heading for the threadbare part of the carpet that made such a great speedway. Round and round he sped, faster and faster, until his whiskers blew back and he was filled with the joy of speed. He longed to wave at Keith, but realized a good driver must keep both paws on the hand grip. He glanced up and noticed that Keith's eyes were now closed. The boy had fallen asleep with a smile on his face. Ralph dragged his heels to break the motorcycle. Quietly, quietly, he parked it beside the bed and quietly removed the crash helmet and hid it behind the curtain. He did not want to disturb the sleeping boy. Ralph could not wait to ride the motorcycle because now it was his to keep. And that, my friends, is the end of this fantastic story. If you like this story a lot, not only should you go on and take your AR quiz for this, but you could read other stories written by this same author. She writes ribsy stories about a dog. She writes other 
stories about Ralph the Mouse, and she also writes the Ramona the Pest series. Enjoy, boys and girls.